Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now you've surely heard of Silicon Valley. Why is it called Silicon Valley? Because of course the chips that we use today in our smartphones, our laptops, our desktops, probably even in your microwave oven, of course, use chips built on silicon because silicon is a semiconductor. I won't go into it more. I've got a whole video here on this channel talking about all how that works. What I want to talk about today though is the fact that ARM have now demonstrated a CPU, fully functional CPU running not on silicon but on plastic. So if you want to find out more please let me explain. So the foundation of all integrated circuits, chips if you want to call it like that, that we use today of course is the transistor and transistors at the moment are traditionally put onto silicon as I explain in that other video. But there are other types of transistors that we could use. For example, there are thin film transistors, TFT, and you've probably heard of those because they are used in displays, TVs, monitors, and so on. And they're used in a kind of a matrix and the TFT tra uh, transistor is used to switch on and off the pixels on each of the individual LEDs. Now, if you take that TFT transistor and not put it on glass, certainly not putting it on silicon, but put it on a different substrate, in this case, plastic, now you have a, a circuit, an integrated circuit that can contain transistors that is also flexible, can be twisted, can be put inside of a label and stuck on the side of a box, for example. And that's what ARM has done. It's working with a company called Pragmatic, which specializes in building flexible integrated circuits using TFT transistors, transparent at that, so you can actually see through it. And then they've actually managed to make a CPU, fully functional CPU inside of less than one square centimeter on a plastic substrate so that it can actually be used in the future in all kinds of things. We'll talk about more about the future in a minute, but the world is not flat. The world is not flat, the world is 3D. And the more we have flexibility in how we make these circuits, in what we put them in, that opens up a whole new set of uh, markets. So the challenge until now with the plastic TFT uh, transistors is getting it down to a small enough size. I mean, they've had big examples of circuits that were very, very large, but of course we want them to be down to very, very small, and that's what they've managed to do. Uh, Arm has made a, a Cortex M0 Plus microprocessor, uh, which they're calling Plastic Arm. It's less than one square centimeter, has 56,000 uh, devices, what they call that, which is basically a transistor uh, and a resistor together, okay? And it's fully compatible with the Cortex M0 Plus, can run Cortex M0 Co, 86 instructions. Of course, now when you've got a, a system on a chip, not only do you need the CPU, you need things like the interrupt controller, you need IO uh, out to the memory, you need GPIO, general purpose IO, to get out to the outside world, you need memory itself, you need ROM, read only memory and they've managed to produce this all in this tiny plastic chip and run programs on it and it works. Now the way they've been able to prototype this is that the read only part of the system on a chip, the program that's going to be run, is actually etched into the chip at manufacturing time. It can't be changed, you can't download new code onto it. Then once it comes out of the manufacturing process, the chips are then run and then the validation occurs. And it runs at the colossal speed of 29 kilohertz. It has 128 bytes of memory and 456 bytes of ROM code, but it works. It's a full Cortex M0 processor that is running. Now, of course, the, the possibilities for this are enormous. So let's talk about some of those possibilities. The first thing we have to know is that it's great for intelligent packaging, uh, food waste, for example. Here's a clever idea. If you don't just have an expiry date on your food, how many times have people thrown things away because they say, well, it's near the expiry date. They smell it, it smells okay, but I, I trust the expiry date. Well, of course, that depends on also what kind of uh, different environments that food has been. If it's been left in your car while you went shopping and then you put it in your car and you went off to go and buy something else and it sat in the heat for an hour, that's going to be very different to the fact if it literally came out of the freezer, you, you came out of the shop, you put it into a cool bag, took it home, put it into your fridge. Very, very different. So in fact, food, if you can track the kind of environment it goes through, you can build up a model to how quickly that food will go off. And wasting food, of course, is something we don't want to do. We want to increase the longevity of food. This is just an example. 
example. If you've now got some intelligence on the packaging that is able to monitor uh, how quickly the different temperatures, how much it's been taken through different temperatures, how much it's been exposed to light, how much exposed to heat, then of course you can change the, uh, the, the longevity of the food and we don't have so much waste. And this idea of waste goes into so much more because what about if we're looking about a circular economy rather than a linear economy. A linear economy means you build something, you use it, you throw it away. What about if you build something, you use it and then you recycle it back in? Now these little chips, because they're made of plastic, Okay, they could be taken off and used in something else. They could be reused again and again and again because they are plastic. They're not so fragile. They're not so sensitive as uh, silicon chips, static electricity, all that kind of stuff. You can just take it and put it on something else. Or what about this for an idea? What about if we could actually put them onto biodegradable plastic? Now that isn't here yet today. That's certainly 10 plus years away, maybe even more. But wouldn't that be interesting to say, yes, this is actually biodegradable. So there's so much stuff that can be done when you have some kind of compute power in a very, very uh, flexible material that then can be put on all kinds of things. I've talked mainly about packaging and food and the but just use, you use your imagination. Imagine all the things you could do with something that's only less than a square uh, centimeter, I mean, a plastic, flexible, okay, and yet is able to monitor and to calculate uh, and so on. Could be a great idea. So uh, really, really interesting that while we're talking about Moore's law and five nanometers and three nanometers and Intel are doing that and TSMC are doing the other, it's really interesting that there are other avenues being opened up. Now, of course, it took the semiconductor industry, uh, you know, decades to get to where we are today. And this really is the beginning of this technology. It'll be really interesting to see where it goes over the next five, 10, 15, 20 years to see the effort that gets put into this. Who knows what kind of plastic uh, processes we could have in the future and then what the flexibility of those are and what that means for wearables, for packaging, for IoT, for edge devices, well, for everything. It's just absolutely amazing. So kudos to the people at Pragmatic and to ARM for making a Cortex M0 processor using uh, thin film transistors on a plastic substrate, making it very flexible. Brilliant. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Space. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I also hope you'll follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. Don't forget also have a newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com. Type your email address. No spam, just the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.